It's time to go into business for yourself. Get ready for another episode of the Franchise Academy Podcast. Education, insight, and inspiration. Here's your host, small business and franchise expert, Tom Scarda. Welcome, everybody. My name is Tom Scarda. This is the Franchise Academy and a special podcast edition of the Franchise Front Runner. Today, I'm really excited to have Jeff and Penny Torn with me, and they own two franchises. Yes, they're crazy, and we're going to talk about it real, real quick here. So if you don't know, I'm a franchise consultant. I match people with opportunities based on skills, personality, goals, kind of like the e-harmony of business is what I like to call it. So I worked with Jeff and Penny several years ago, and I can't remember how many years at the moment, but welcome, Jeff. Welcome, Penny. Hi. 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 Thank you. Husband and wife, but they're in two different locations at this time. <laughs> busy running two businesses, so this is nuts. Really good stuff. <laughs> so, what what companies do you guys own? So, um, we've got uh, Kitchen Tune Up, which is my day to day. I'm running the Kitchen Tune Up. Uh, Penny's, uh, you know, we're partners in both businesses together, but uh, Kitchen Tune Up's, I guess, my day to day baby. And, 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 and then we own a series of kickboxing gyms called I Love Kickboxing. Oh, very cool. And where are you guys located? Malvern, Pennsylvania is, is where we make our home. Nice. And our kitchen tune-up is uh, we have a showroom uh, design center located in Malvern. So like two minutes from our house. But we service the uh, whole Philadelphia region, South Jersey, and, and Delaware. We have multiple territories. Delaware, there. yeah, the and Delaware. Um, what do they call it? The Delaware Valley, right? No, no, actually. No, the, Del- state, the of- state of Delaware, too. Oh, I'm sorry. Because, yeah, a lot of people have shore homes down here, and we do a lot of kitchen remodeling down here as well. Oh, cool. Well, good for you guys. Yeah, remote, it's really remote wonderful. territory we're building up there. And you and have then, multi, so it's multi-units that you own. Is that right? That's yeah, we correct. Have five, yep. We have five kitchen tune-ups and Penny. How many I Love Kickboxing five. territories do we have? Five. Five yeah. I Love Kickboxings. Cool. And so how long have you guys been in the franchise world? Since 2016. 2016. 15. 15. Well, we, we, we bought the end of 2015, and we really launched in 2016. So we'll call yeah, it five years. years. Yeah, there, yeah, there's a story years. behind, yeah. Jeff, what did you do for a living before uh, franchising? So I... I was uh, in sales, um, enterprise software sales, so selling um, software solutions that automated business processes in large Fortune 500 companies. And uh, Penny, what do you do for real life? (laughs) I'm a pharmaceutical executive. I do regulatory affair and drug development. Wow. Very cool. (laughs) Very deep. Way above my head, that's for sure. (laughs) Um, So... As you think back about these five years, Penny, for you, um, any interesting stories that you didn't expect? <laughs> well, um, yeah, there, there's been quite a few, I guess. The first one, when, when Jeff came home from work in June and said he wanted to start his own business, um, I had just lost my father. My stepmother moved in with us, and we had three young kids. Oh, wow. And I thought he was... Like, what are you doing? But um, I said, if you're going to do this, he's a sales guy. I'm a data person. I said, we have to do this methodically. So I I gave him a gift to to see an executive coach. And we went to the coach and we came out of our first session. He's holding my hand. He goes, Penny, this is terrific. Don't you feel great? I'm like, we're about as far apart as Israel is in the Middle East. (laughs) Um, but the next week, the coach got the, he got the dust of it and got us together, and um, the rest was history. So that was really exciting. I mean, the stories go on, but that's how that was our start. That's how it started. Absolutely. Well, that's cool, Jeff. What's the greatest victory or lesson that you've learned in business so far? Wow. Um, so we, you know, you always know about how hard it is to launch a business um, and, and become successful and, and, and make it an enduring business. And I think the, the thing is, is the, the model that the franchise, both of our franchises um, provided us was to quickly get up and running. 
Um, you know, so kitchen tune up our first year, we had one of the best first years that I've ever seen. And, and right now here we are going on our fifth year. We're, we're number one franchisee in the country out of 200. Woo! Um, so, you know, Penny, Penny's found similar heights and uh, I love kickboxing. You know, we were in the top 10 there. Um, so, you know, what, you know, it's just kind of launching out of the gate and starting a business and, and, um, you know, having that burn to grow it to become something that will last you hear everyone failing in five years and 10 years and so you look at that and i want this to be a thing that lasts forever for our family and uh that that's that takes some focus yeah absolutely and congratulations on that mazel tov that is amazing thank you for two and and just for two different (laughs) concepts that's great it's penny um and so what what have you learned over the past five years about business um, you really, when you're in a husband and wife as a partner, you really need to talk and, and not just, you, you can't assume that you know each other's minds. I mean, I can give you a couple of funny stories that weren't funny at the time. Jeff decided he was going out to get um, real estate and he came home with a signed lease and said, I need you to sign. I said, what? Uh. Um, because you know, it's just it, we just have to put your name down here. And I said, wait a minute, is this like called a personal responsibility? Not happening. Uh-huh. So that was the first lesson when he we had to go back to the realtor and said, forgot to talk to my business partner. Oh, yeah. um, so yeah. we really have to talk about things and not make assumptions with each other. You know, you may think and conceptually you're on the same page, but you can really be going in different directions. So that was huge. Um, similarly, you know. Actually, I think that's a big part of the business for us is really saying, okay, we need to sit down and we need to talk about the details because I could be going one way and he's like, yeah, go, go, go. I said, no, Jeff, I really need to discuss this with you because sometimes you think, you think you're going in the same place and you're not. Yeah. Um, that, that was a big, a big thing I learned through this. Yeah, that's great. I think, that's great. I think the biggest thing that I've learned, um, because I didn't come from the management role, I was more of an individual contributor in my role. Mm -hmm. And I think what I've, I'm amazed at, um, well, A, and it seems so obvious when you look at it, but the importance of your team and your employees and, and getting, you know, how to get the right people and inspire them and, and, um, you know, how, you know, get them trained and knowledgeable. And like, and I, I see other compatriots in both of our models that don't get that. And they fail. And yeah. I look at us and then, you know, look at what Penny's done for, for our gym. You know, we have people who have been with us for years and like, you know, that environment and people, same thing here at Kitchen Tune Up. I've got a core team of just people that are, that just are passionate and, and are all in to whatever, whatever this crazy thing we've created. And, and um, Jeff's yeah, a, na- as you're as a natural, Jeff's a natural leader. And while he said before he was an individual contributor, what's beautiful that I see in him, because I come from corporate and I went through all that executive leadership training and what have you. He has stepped into it and he does it so beautifully and he's transparent, which a lot of people aren't. And then they wonder why they don't have the team on board. When he explains something, he says, look, we're going for this and here's the why. And if you do this, we get here. And it's huge to see that kind of enthusiasm and commitment because when when he gets a sale, it's not he gets a sale, it's we get one. Look what we did collectively. And he always turns it around to the team. He's, he really is a natural to get everyone engaged and, and as passionate about it as he is. You know what? I think you're, you're really on a point, which is a really big point for people to understand that are listening and they're thinking about buying a business or, or they're trying to get the best practices for their business right now. And that is there's a big difference between managing and leading. And Jeff is a leader. Yes, hundred percent, and that's really, really awesome. So, and I know that there's a lot of cool things happening because oh, stop! You have a <laughs> oh, stop! But tell me more. Um, oh, it's going. Yeah. <laughs> no, really, keep going. So, well, you have something very exciting. You were just telling me before we got on the air. I want to make sure we hit that right now. What's going on? What are you guys doing? Yeah, TV uh, so, show. Um, crazy opportunity. Yeah, we, crazy opportunity. Opportunity fell in our lap um, a couple weeks ago. Um, so, you know, we, we, we do all the right things. You know, we have a million reviews on our site. I mean, we work really hard for that. And so when you make good things happen, take good care, things appear. So um, I got approached by a TV show called Sell This House. It's on the FYI network. And um, they're filming in Philadelphia for this season. And uh, they invited us on the show to basically 
handle the kitchen. And we did the first episode and it was like, it was unbelievable. And uh, it went really well. And they invited us to, so I have four more episodes that we're also taking part in. I, I just filmed the second one yesterday. And uh, so it, it's been, you know, I don't know what it'll be or what part of me and the show comes in. I mean, I was on scenes and had lines and it was like doing our thing. Some might be quiet. Some they actually talk to the host and I have no idea what it turns out, but it was, it was a thrill. And either way, it's, a, you know, it's been, we're going to get promotional like, rights to talk about this online and social media and, um, Oh yeah. So, wow. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. We have to bring you back to talk more about that after that gets uh, aired. Yeah, and, we'll have a, a viewing party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so huge. And, and the thing that you said is so true. When you're doing the hard work and doing the right thing, treating people right, it comes back, man. It, call it karma. You know, at the very least, that's what it is. But you're doing great work out there, and um, it shows, and, you know, everything is going well, and I'm just – so excited and I guess I could say proud, <laughs> but it's really, really amazing, amazing thing for me to hear. Um, I just, I'm, I'm gushing. I'm, 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 <laughs> look, I'm felling, felling. Um, so what, yeah, the other we, thing of that karma that I think like both Penny and I have, like have in spades, um, is you get a lot out of a franchise from both the system and what they provide. But I think what we found in both of our franchises, what we personally, you know, Penny's on the board of, of I Love Kickboxing. I just joined the advisory council for Kitchen Tune-Up. Um, I do validation calls. Every, I mean, once a week I have like one or two. I take calls from other owners that are new or that, you know, that they see what they, they use me as an example. Like, look what you could do. And I, and I take a million calls and I help whoever I can. And then it comes back. Maybe. I mean, I learn from everyone else. And then, you know, like you said, the karma, like we we both – um, believe deeply in karma. Penny's father actually wrote books on the, the topic. So, um, but you know, you get as much as you put in, you get back more. Um, even if it's well, you know, given yeah. it an effort. And it's, no, I was, I was just going to say when, when we had to close, you know, with COVID, we got the news on a Thursday night. We closed the gym on a Friday. I met with my staff. I went live Sunday to all the members and I just, from the heart, you know, we, we asked them to stay with us if they could. And then we, on Monday, we went to Zoom, but not just exercise, it was the community. We had meditation on Tuesday. We had coffee talk or wine with Penny on Wednesday. We had <laughs> trivia on Thursday. Then we did a kids fitness class. Not, and again, this wasn't for revenue. This was because we cared. We knew parents were home with their kids and maybe they needed a break to make a grilled cheese sandwich. Let's do a video for the kids. and. We just looked at every way that we built this community. How do we nurture and continue to love it and put our hearts and souls in? And, and that's just, you know, how, how we are. That's so awesome. I got goosebumps. That's, I didn't know you guys were doing all that. That's amazing. Yeah. That's we so threw a cool. party. We threw a member appreciation party that Penny arranged. Um, it was at, we didn't do it at one year because we just were too busy and it's just we weren't ready yet. And year two, we did a member appreciation party. We had it at a local country club and put on this, had a DJ and amazing food. And you know, people came out in their swank. And the yeah. And it was neat red because carpet. they didn't know they amazing. were going to get awards. And we had awards from everything to what class they took to to them being enthusiastic and helping each other with workouts. And the, it was the little things, right? And that's what makes it, you know, when Jeff calls a customer at, at the kitchen, it's like they know we're coming out, right? Even if, or if it's not him, they know the team behind him is a reflection of him. Similarly, when people said, wow, I got to know you, Penny. I know you live an hour away from the gym, but I really got to know you through Zoom the last several months. And they see that our team in both businesses, you know, are very much a reflection of us. Like we break bread together. We have home parties with them for the holidays. And that's important. You know, we take our time in, in hiring and you, you have to really, what's that expression? Take your time to hire quick to fire because you got to make sure it's a really good fit. Right. Absolutely. And you got to remember to read their resume. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we, we did have an experience. I, I do. I guess that, ah, that's a point. nice entree. I'll try to remember that. <laughs> um, so for Kitchen Tune-Up, I'm kind of the behind the scenes. I, I do the coaching, the interviewing. And, and kind of how we fell into this is Jeff and his sales manager were interviewing for a new sales rep. 
And they said, Penn, we'd like you to meet this person because it's in home sales and you meet a lot of women and we want your take. So I, I said, can you, can you get me his resume? And I'm meeting with him. I look over his resume and there was a six year gap in it. So I said, can you tell me what you were doing in the last six years? And he said, well, I was incarcerated for domestic violence. <laughs> so um, I continued with the interview. I actually asked him if there were any skills he learned during his incarceration that might translate to good sales and safely in people's homes because I, I was really trying, at which point he looked at his watch. I don't know if it was the parole officer, but he jetted, and that became a joke in our business. Again, different skill sets. Jeff is extremely good at that big picture, and then he's like, he and his sales manager both interviewed this guy, both read the resume, but I'm the data person. I looked and go, there's a gap here. So we, <laughs> we balance each other. Right. You know? Yeah, yin and yang, but I have to tell you, you're hysterical. You should, you've got to have your own <laughs> podcast. That's, that should be your next venture is your own podcast. You need the, you need the penny show. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Me and Jeff, yeah. Penny show. Penny, a penny for your thoughts. It, it, that's the title. It's oh, great. That's good. Okay. That's I love good it. Word. Yeah, you, you'd be good at that, I think. So, hey, what, what do you guys wish you know, knew five years ago that you know now? Don't start two businesses at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, there's a happy ending. Why not, Penn? <laughs> yeah, there was a little bit of a rocky road there for a few months. I, I'm sure yeah. it was. We've had our, we've had our yeah. challenges. It's not all roses. At, at the very least, sure. absolutely. absolutely. But you I know what I, what I, I'm sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say what Marlo Thomas says about her marriage with Phil Donahue, the secret to the good marriage is you both can't be crazy at the same time. <laughs> we, we take turns. <laughs> <laughs> we do. That's so true. <laughs> that's that is scary true. <laughs> That is scary, too. Jeff, um, you're going to say something that did I cut you oh, off? Oh yeah, I'd say the one thing you know, kind of that I, that I also learned um, is uh, I came in focused. I come from a sales background, so I'm all sales focused, and it's great. I'm like driving revenue, and yeah, like and literally, if I I showed you the spreadsheet that I share with my team, and like we're all about growth, like over year over year, quarter over month, you know, whatever. So that's a sales focus. Um, and, and Penny, I, you know, to her credit and her patience, you know, she's like, where's the money here, Jeff? And I'm like, oh yeah, we're building, we're building, you know, and I kind of, I kept telling myself I'm reinvesting. Right. And I was, and that's part of what, you know, we're growing hundred percent year over year, like for multiple years in a row, but I'm reinvesting doesn't mean that you don't, you can't take money home. So I was so focused on reinvesting and, um, and I have a financial background, but I wasn't focused on that part. I was focused on driving growth wow. and move, missing the profitability that we need. I have a little, um, I read a book, I think one of your, one of your topics or a book that changed your view. Um, uh, I don't want to take your thunder away, but one that changed that view is really um, it's called profit first. And that I thank God I started it pre COVID because I read this book and I, I'm like, Penny, this thing's amazing. Like, and it's the subtlest little change. It's pay yourself first, right? Take the profit out, put it aside. Yep. Don't for the last crumbs that are be left at the end because there's never going to be crumbs left. You're going to spend it. You're like, oh, there's my account. Let's go get a car. Let's do this. Let's, let's get another ad. So what I do now is, is and I started this pre-COVID when we were killing it. I started taking that, you know, ten percent of our revenue, put into another bank account, two accounts, one for profit, one for my paycheck, and I started that. And we had January, February to the remote. We were just flying, to, and then COVID hit, and thank God I did it. I had a whole bunch of savings for the business that I would not have had if it weren't for that little subtle change. And so now I literally every two weeks I go and I see all the cash that came in. I literally I take fifteen percent out, break it into two accounts. And then we run the business on the rest. You never notice the difference. And it ends up being a lot <laughs> um, every month. And uh, yeah. that, that's a life changer. You have to focus on profit. I know it seems stupid to even have to say it, but it's not just sales. You, you've got to focus on how, how can you make money out of the business. That's what the point. Absolutely. That's brilliant advice. I'm so glad that you said it. It's so great. I even say to my, to my kids something I learned from a mentor years ago. Is even like if you have a job and you're working at McDonald's and you, you know you're making a, just a couple of bucks, you should take 10% of that money, and and of course, like you said, put some in a fun account or whatever. Yep. But you should also spend, you know, five percent 
on just something crazy. You you want like an expensive pair of sunglasses or or something. Otherwise, you're going to end up resenting your business or resenting your job if you're not getting anything from it that that gives you. It's some, gone. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's a problem, but, you know, in America, you know, and, and I guess anywhere, just, we're consumerists. And, and if you have money, there's so many temptations out there for us to just spend it. And I forget what the, the, the law in the profit first, it's, I think it's, I, there's a, there's a law. It's, it's, it's about the, you know, if you have resources, you will spend them. I forget the name of it. It's, it's eluding me at the moment. I got to find it. Um, um, but it's a law that, that literally says you, you will spend up to what the resources are that are there. By taking it out, it's not there. You don't spend it, and it ends up being savings. Right. And you could do that, like you said, in your in your life. Like You get a paycheck. You don't have to be a business owner to do it. You get a paycheck. You get X dollars. Take a percentage out. Put it aside. It's going to be there for you to have your cushion and to grow and invest, and who knows what you want to do. So, Just save um, for a franchise. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm telling you, for four years, I didn't do it. I didn't do it for four years, and 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 you know I was making paychecks like probably a quarter of what I should have because of it, and now I mean, now I'm actually taking the earnings that we're supposed to have, um, and so that we can live the life. I'm working hard. We invested, and we need to have that return. Otherwise, yeah. what, once again, what's the point? Right, um, right. No, it's, so. you know, the journey is part of it, right? So you, it, it's it's like when you're working a job and you're waiting to go on this big vacation when you retire, man, you know, that may, you know, you don't know how life <laughs> works, right. man. You got to jump on it now. That's right. That's right. You know, in little pieces, everything in moderation, I guess is another good way to say that part. Right. That's for sure. So what would you guys say to somebody who's listening in and they're thinking about a franchise? What advice would you have for somebody? You want me to get this one, Penny? Because I love this question. Um, oh, you go. I, I have thoughts as well, but go ahead. Both go. No, I want you both to go. But Jen, oh, okay. great. We okay. have such different lenses here, and I, I love what I already can imagine what Penny will say, and I can't wait to hear it. Um, one of my first advice, believe it or not, Tom, and I'm not being patting you in the back or anything um, and being like, oh, kissing your butt here, but one of the things I actually tell people to do is read your book because <laughs> the first thing I say is you have to think about this before. I literally will do a validation call with someone going, hey, before I do this, what should I think about? And I tell them, I actually tell people to get your book. I said, you need to think about, do you have enough money to invest? Do you have money to pay for your life if you go start a business? Or are you going to bleed the company dry of money because you don't have enough to keep the lights on? You have to think about these things. Do you have the support of your spouse? Like, you know, I thought I had it, you know, but we worked through and got to it. You know, it takes work. These aren't like quick answers. Like you have to make sure you got your house in order and you have the money to invest in the business. Like, so when I started it, we put aside enough money that I didn't have to worry about the first year for the business to breathe. And I knew that we had the, what we needed for our home to continue. So really? these, these, like that, you know, and your book actually really takes you through that in a way that makes you, you know, really take stock uh, before yeah. you plow forward, and and you know, very important. And so, yeah, kudos to you. That's a great, it was a real, it was a helpful book to me as I was embarking on the journey. I read it, you know, fast, and it was helpful. And it's still, well, thank you know, you. I tell people all the time. It's meant to be a fast read. You can read it in a day if you have to. <laughs> Don't get the- <laughs> right because when you when you're looking at a franchise, it's kind of like in the moment. It's not like. Oh well, yeah, well, I got you know four months to to figure this out. It's it's not like that. You typically you want to you know hit it and, and do it right, and, and so you yeah. need the education. So appreciate that, Penny. What's your advice? Um, it, it's a it's one one concept, but it come out as two points. Understand what a franchise is and what it isn't. People will go with a franchise because they think they're de-risking going in their own business. And in theory, it should. It's, it should be less risky because there's systems in place. It's been tried and true. On the other hand, you need to be able to follow the system. So you need to know yourself. If you're kind of the kind of renegade that can't follow the beat to a drum and you've been fired from job after job and think, I'm just going to go get my own franchise, you might be fooling yourself. Also, again, going back to knowing what a franchise is and isn't, it's not a silver bullet. It's your business at the end of the day. While there are systems in place, you have to do your marketing. You have to be good at hiring your staff. You have to know your local laws. You have to know your customers, who they are and who they're not. You have to know customer service. You have to know sales. The 
franchisor is your umbrella. They should be support, but they're not going to be, you know, a life draft uh, uh, preserver either. So people shouldn't get into that blame game. Learn what you can and continue that journey. Yeah. It's a great life, but just know those things and have eyes open. It's not yeah. easy. Yeah. You got to learn everything. You go from a job in one little box. Like I went from being a sales guy to now I'm like, Sales, production, finance, accounting. Coffee, blah, 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 blah. the floor. Like now I'm, I'm learning 14 things. And, and as you grow, you start hiring yourself out of those things. But you, you start with just you. You start all just 17 you in the hats. You wear right. all 17 hats. I got an org chart. I'm continuously trying to hire some of my boxes away. Right, right. Absolutely. And, and you should hire away the thing you despise most first. That's yeah. my advice anyway. My, um, I have, a, I have a, 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 a business coach that I work with and she says, get yourself to your genius zone. So you start getting yourself out of the things that aren't your skill. Continue to build your skills, but at the end of the day, you want to be in your genius zone that gives you like, the things that you perform at the highest level of enjoyment and, and capability. Ability. So, you know, for me, like my genius zone is probably more, you know, marketing sales. Like, so, you know, I, I kind of lean back to that. So I keep trying to like, if I could get all the other things out and I can focus on that, I know I can grow to the moon because that's my genius zone. That's what I enjoy. Love um, it. So that, you know, I think that's another strong point of advice. I give a lot of other owners that come into the kitchen tune up is um, it's that challenge of high, you know, hiring away your jobs don't continuously wear all the hats because you will wear too many hats at first and as you get busy it's a fear thing to add overhead and expense yes. find a way that you get the right person give away those things and magically and i feel like it's magic as every time i make that hard hire that's expensive i'm like oh my god am i gonna afford this all of a sudden i free myself up to get back to my genius zone and a half a million dollars in sales comes on our bottom line because now i'm back focused to sales or, or marketing or whatever it is and that production thing that i wasn't great at i was doing a worse job than the person i hired and i was taking all my time away from things i should be doing i you know it's so funny you That's say that i gotta i just gotta give you this point just to this is not about me but it, it's important to understand that you know they say the most valuable commodity in life is time and you can't buy time in a business, you can if you do it correctly. If you got the systems and you're willing to delegate to the point where, you know, you're doing a great job, Jeff, but then when you go to the next level where you're hiring assistance for your home life, right? If you don't enjoy getting your car washing, picking up your dry cleaning, pay somebody $20 an hour to do that if you could make $60 an hour, you know, running your business instead. And when you get to that level, now – you're really successful. That's how I define success. Tim Ferriss. Thank you, Tim Ferriss, for that. <laughs> That's our work. That's, That's our work. right. That is so true. Like, this is all fun running business and all this, but if I could do what we're doing and do it in four hours and sit by the beach and just, you know, look at the numbers and manage it. Sure. That'd be fun. Right. Well, actually, and that, that's a good example. It, a good point. Last year, Tom, um, up until then, every vacation we were on, we were on our laptops, the computers, phone calls um, from the hotel rooms, and totally. we wanted to take a big family vacation. It was at that point in the life with kids going to college, and we said, we, we really needed a big trip. And I gave him a year's notice. I said, you have a year. I won't, will not take this trip unless we have the people in the roles you need so you can actually enjoy this trip. And we went away for two weeks with our three kids, and I think he had one call. Wow. I barely looked at email. And and we I'm won't so talk grateful. about what it was like when I got back. <laughs> but no, no, but you, it, it was a message, though. There you go again about systems and process and putting that in place and testing it in advance and, you know, really, um, and then having the trust in the system to let it go and know that we'll be okay. Brilliant. I love it. You guys are awesome, man. So awesome. <laughs> And you learn so much going through this process. And then what's cool about you guys is that you share it with your fellow franchisees in both concepts and now with people listening to this podcast. So you're paying it forward in that way. And, and that's more good karma that's going to come your way because of it. So I appreciate it. But before we part, uh, Penny, wh where is your I Love Kickboxing store? And, and just so people yeah, know how they can sure. do that. We have cool. one in Jenkintown, yeah. Pennsylvania, and we have one opening in Montgomeryville, Pennsylvania later this year. Oh, very so come cool. Come out and see us, yeah. Absolutely. 
And, and Jeff, you're covering the greater Philadelphia area, South Jersey, and Delaware for Kitchen right. Tuna. We, Is have, that right? we have a showroom physical location here in Malvern, Pennsylvania, where we cover about an hour and a half radius. And then we have a, um, another remote territory that we purchased down in the, the coastal area of Delaware. We'll, we'll probably open up a showroom down there in the, in the coming months with our countertop partner. So we'll have a second physical location nice. down there. And uh, we're working closely with Kitchen Tune-Up for our kind of um, territory expansion plan. So, you know, right now we have f five total territories and they're working with us to, to kind of keep the our region because they see the growth we're having and they're supporting it by not, um, by knowing that this is where we want to be and, and supporting the growth of that, not selling out around us. So they're working, you know, they work really nicely with us to support what we're doing. That, that's a great point, and thank you for mentioning that. So a lot of people often ask about expansion. And at the end of the day, a franchisor rather have 100 great franchisees that own 10 territories instead of 1,000 franchisees that own one each. So yeah. if they got a, a great couple like you guys and you're killing it, man, let you guys run more territory, absolutely, and, and they'll protect it for you. So that, that's an awesome point. I want to, again, thank you guys for coming on. We'll do this again. I want to get that TV show information out. So send me the information. I'll put it on this podcast. Um, so anyone who needs information about Jeff and Penny Torin, go to thefranchiseacademy.com, and all their contact information will be there. The stores and, and the addresses for I Love Kickboxing stores, everything will be there at ilovekickboxing.com. Thank you, guys, and we will see you soon. Thank you. Thanks, it was a pleasure. My pleasure. Bye-bye. <laughs> This has been another episode of the Franchise Academy Podcast. For more info, go to our website, thefranchiseacademypodcast.com. Remember to subscribe to Tom Scarta's YouTube channel for educational videos on franchising, education, insight, and inspiration.